good evening one and all i am dr hemalatha associate professor of bc department ngm college polachi it gives me an immense pleasure to welcome all the participants for this 7 days international faculty development program on innovation in information technology post covid 19 i thank the management principal head of the department dr k haridas and all our faculty team for their endless support in organizing this virtual online program the resource person for day one session is mr dharma sivasami manager sales systems penske truck leasing pennsylvania usa he is going to present on integration of systems on cloud now i hand over the session to mr dharma sir it's over to you sir good evening everyone and um, thank you for giving me this opportunity especially uh, ngm college and also do, uh, dr hamalata for inviting me to come and talk about integrations of systems on cloud i would like to keep it brief and um, I, i'm not a professor like you guys but i would like to express from the business perspective how of uh, use clouds and how it gets integrated into the cloud so um <clears throat> i would like to start with the uh, a disclaimer again i'm sure you guys are not making any business decisions with that but i just wanted to let you know i'll be using a lot of examples and things like that uh, with the products and companies it's all not related to anything that i'm going to recommend or i i don't have any affiliation with any of those products so i just wanted to let everybody know but i have used most of the products that is listed here uh during my life uh during my uh, career path so i just wanted to let everybody know that um so the first is uh, let me start with the agenda agenda so it's going to start with the the cloud evolution or innovation and then what are the different types of cloud and then i'm going to focus on only one specific uh, item today because the cloud itself is a, a huge topic and with this uh, with the time that we have i don't want to be on a very high level i'm going to go with one of the cloud which is the salesforce one and then we're going to look little deep into how it is set up and then and since my topic is going to be regarding data integration so we will be looking at a couple of data integration providers and then different types of data integration whether it is real time or a batch uh, data integration and then we will go to the question and answers so i'll try to keep keep it brief and uh, if you have any questions then we can talk or chat later once uh, this is done so hope this information will be useful to uh, each and every one for at least some pieces of information will be useful for each of you so with that being said um, my name is again uh, dharma sivasami i have been here in us for the last 20 plus years um, and i have been doing salesforce i am i started with c++ and then moved on to java and then for the last 10 years or so i have been working on salesforce and cloud design and how to integrate data and then system integration related to salesforce okay so uh the disclaimer is the one i just went through and then um the agenda is the items that i just talked about in few seconds okay so let me go with uh since one of the things is innovation after covid 19 so uh just uh, you guys are all familiar with how the process evolved but in the last 30 years also uh the the innovation and evolution has changed from from the way that how we use our systems how internet is connecting to different things so we started with back in the 70s using one mainframe and then terminals were used to access data um and then came the desktop applications then came the client server applications then came the internet related applications and most recently or in the last 10 or 15 years it's been the cloud based applications which has taken over um most of the computing power 
So with that being said, um, most of you are familiar with the what does cloud mean, but I just wanted to touch briefly because I don't know what level of um, the audience, what level they either know or do not know, but I just wanted to give a flavor of it. Um, so cloud computing is, it's mostly an uh, on-demand availability of computer system resources. It can be hardware, software, it can be the computer computing power, any of those things is uh, the use of cloud-enabled applications. Um, so with that being said, I wanted to talk about a little bit about different types of clouds that is available. So if you think about the cloud as an architecture, it has a clear differentiation of the layers. So you have the bottom layer, which is the infrastructure layer, and then you have the middle tier or the middle layer where it is the platform and then the top is the application. So there are different cloud providers who actually offer individual services. You can use infrastructure as a service or a platform as a service or SaaS model, which is an application as a service. So you, you have all those flexibility and with, with the hardware became, becoming cheap and it's easy to put these things together and offer um, these cloud computing power to all the users. So with that being said, um, when you think about cloud, the first thing that comes into mind is the public cloud. So the public cloud is anything, uh, and it's a traditional one. Everyone is aware of it. And uh, when you, if, you, if you think about cloud computing, the vendors can automatically or easily allocate resources for you. Uh, they can allocate memory, they can allocate RAM, they can allocate processing power, they can when you tell how many users they can do uh, seamlessly for you. So the public cloud, one of the uh, pioneers in the public cloud is Salesforce. So that is the area that I'm going to be touching on today. Um, the next one is the hybrid cloud where you have some of the things in the cloud and some of them is in, in your internal firewall, which is basically one of the prime example you can use is like your exchange. So you may have different things on the cloud, but your exchange may be within your firewall. And the third one is the private cloud, where depending on your data sensitivity and depending on how um, your company operates, you may have all the infrastructure within your firewall, and that is the VMware or vCloud that, that is available. So again, you may be familiar with all of them, but I just wanted to touch base and make um, a baseline so, so I can talk about where I'm going. So if you look at the major cl cloud providers, again, I have worked with most of the cloud providers that is listed. So if you think about AWS, this, this is a huge, which can provide uh, and crunch a lot of data for us. And you can write applications on top of it. If you think about Google Cloud, they have a very good analytics engine. Um, um, my company uses that. And even AWS, my company uses that. Windows Azure is, um, Microsoft product, which is another good product, which does a lot of good things as far as the cloud computing is concerned. And uh, the last one that I have listed here is Salesforce. So Salesforce, I'm going to go a little deep into it. So when you look at cloud providers, mo most or all of them have this agility. Um, they can adapt, they can give you, uh, depending on your number of users, they can enhance and give it to you in a very short period of time. So very, they are very agile and they're very nimble in their um, output. And then elasticity, if you have a huge demand, they, will, they can increase and then if your demand shrinks, they can decrease. So that is, the, that is the power of that cloud. And then of course, there is a cost savings. You don't have to have your infrastructure in place within your company to have your network team. You don't have to have your DBA team. You don't have to have your security team. All those things, especially if you're a small company or if your business is not software related. So that is, um, that is how the cloud providers come into picture. So if you are choosing a cloud or if you are recommending a cloud, I would some of the key factors that I would look into is, is of course, security. Um, is your data, can it be pushed into the cloud or is it good to push push to the cloud. So some of the things, depending on your use cases, you have to look at individual clouds and 
one may work for one thing and the other may work for other things. So depending on your business needs, you have to make the decision. And then how, how good is the scalability? And do they have all the infrastructure that you need so you can expand upon because you know what your business needs? And uh, the important thing is integration. So even though these cloud providers can provide you for one of your needs, but if you are a company who has been in the business for a number of years, you may have all your systems on the back end. So can it integrate? Can it integrate back to you? So those are all the things that you need to consider when you are looking into a cloud provider. And then can your development team work on and manage the tools that the cloud provider provides? Or is it compatible with the things that you have? So those are all some of the things that you would have to look for. There are so many other criteria, but I'm just listing a couple of things for you to just think about it before you make a decision on which cloud you want to use. Uh, and the next one I have is, what are all the things to consider before even you do a recommendation? Because some of them is data sensitivity that you don't want um, anybody else to see it. Say, for example, if you have financial information, if you, if you have sensitive information, you may think, I don't want to go with a uh, public cloud. I want to go with a private cloud. So is it is the security the same way that I want if I put it in my data warehouse? And does it, re, uh, does it compile with my all my compliance requirements? And is it compatible with all the systems that I have? So again, this may be a limitation depending on what product you choose or what type of company you do. So, and then of course, if you go to a cloud, then you are locked in, then you, you have to abide by the rules that is set by those companies. Again, these are all not a negative things, but these are all the things that you need to look into before you recommend or you, you, you choose a product. So I want to give both the pros and cons of any of the products that, that is out there. So uh, I want to start with just Salesforce and focus on it. Like I said, I have been working with uh, Salesforce for the last 2009. So it's been 10 plus years since I have been working with them. So one of the key things about these cloud products is they are very nimble and then they they are dedicated to doing and maintaining that one system so they provide you with a basic model that is needed for you to, to to develop so they are constantly innovating they come up with new technologies they they are on the front line as far as the technology is concerned so that is why it is very very easy and very good to go with the cloud provider because if I write a traditional code, then when I roll out the code, then I'm done because I'm moving on to the next project. So when the new innovation comes, it takes more time to go to the next level, to bring it to the next level. So that is where it becomes, uh, there is the plus and minus of going with the cloud or not going with the cloud. So if you think about Salesforce as a platform, what they provide is they provide a basic cloud infrastructure for you if you sign up with them. So when I say basic infrastructure is, so they have different clouds. They have sales, service, marketing, or all those clouds. If you think about sales cloud, what does a salesperson need? They need to be able to create a, a customer or, an, or an, an account, and they need to keep track of all the people whom they are contacting, uh, the, the calls they make, the emails they send, the all those things, the basic things, they provide to you as far as the sales club. So that, that, is the, that is the good thing about these cloud, cloud products is some of the things we take time to develop and test and all those things, they come out of the box with these cloud infrastructure. If you think about service, like if you have a call center where you want to get up and running that you wanted to see all the things that is changing, it's a very simple one, you sign up, and then you can start logging the calls and then basic dashboards and basic things will be available immediately. Within a few weeks, you can get it up and running. So that is the power of um, the cloud systems that is there. So every cloud is different. Everyone provides different key features. Uh, since I'm talking about Salesforce, so the, those provide information relating to sales and service and marketing 
and all those related products. So with that being said, um, I want to touch a little bit on um, how this cloud infrastructure is set up as far as under the hood. So to make it simple and easier, the way they look at it is, say, if you, um, if you look at a flat or an apartment complex where you have so many houses or flats in it. So the cloud, what it, the reason they are able to produce all these things is the sharing. Sharing is the important thing that is, um, that is done by them. So it is like I have in the picture, it says you are, uh, the power is shared, the water is shared, the building maintenance is shared. Anything that is related to the infrastructure is being shared among all of them. But the important thing, even when you share a lot of things, that the first thing that comes into your mind is the trust. Okay, Can I trust somebody? So it is like when you live in an uh, apartment building or when you live in a, in a flat, you do trust your neighbor. You do trust everything that happens in that building. So it is the same thing. Um, the cloud providers provide a dedicated space for you, but it is enclosed within your space. Unless the building falls down, at least that is what they say, unless the building falls down, everything is secure. You are secure within your space. And that is where multi-tenancy is a, it's a good feature that they provide that uh, so they can share the resources among all the different um, buildings or all the different tenants that they are able to uh, that they are able to support. And then the important feature they always say is the metadata. Metadata is uh, something you, you probably are familiar with. In a layman terms, it is um, if you could say, for example, if you want to collect your employees' data. So you may say, okay, I want my first name, last name, um, their social security number, things that is common. So once you say, I want these 10 things done, they provide you all the things that is needed to access it, to read it, to write it, all those things is provided. So the, the whole thing about employee comes as a data form for you, except data, everything else is owned, everything else is their property, but they're able to provide you in a very quick, faster way. And then again, the next one is, uh, the interesting one is the API. So they are able to provide that immediately when you create something on their system, you are able to access it outside. Either you can push data, pull data, you, it is all available. So th those, are all the, those are all the benefits of going. Otherwise, if I go in a traditional model, I had to create a table, I had to do this, I had to do that. So all those things comes into picture, but they provide that. And then of course, the resource sharing. So they are able to allocate more resources and then the resources are all shared. So everybody gets the benefit of accessing the resources. And if you think about innovation, they, like I said, they are constantly innovating. They are constantly, so you may, you may not be using five of the features that they provide, but other companies may be using, but you get the benefit of using those, prop, those features whenever it is out there. And uh, like in this case for Salesforce, they have constant major releases every um, once in three months. So they're able to put the new product in for you to consume it. As long as you want to use it, you can use it. Most of them will be out of the box, but there are paid versions and things like that. So that is regarding the cloud. Again, the, the topic that I want a little bit touch on is the data integration. So if you have a cloud, if you think about the cloud, you have all your data on somebody else's computer, for lack of a better word. So if that is the case, then I need to get into my ERP system. I need to get into my data warehouse. All those things uh, has to happen because uh, not everybody relies completely on cloud. So that is where these data integrators come into play. So MuleSoft is one of the MuleSoft is actually one of the Salesforce product, but it can support variety of cloud infrastructures. The same with Informatica. Informatica is an old ETL tool, but they, they also support various clouds. And um, I have different vendors which use, we supply data for them and we get data with Informatica. Similarly, Talent. Talent is one of the things that, um, 
my company uses and it connects to cloud, it connects to AWS, it connects to Google, it can do all those things. And then um, there are so many providers, I don't want to put all of them, I just picked four of them that either I directly or indirectly work with them, so that is the reason I put them. So then you got Dell Boomi. So the Dell Boomi is one of the primary one that I worked um, from 2009. It's been almost 10 plus years that I've been working with Dell Boomi. So Dell Boomi is, um, again, a similar provider which can interface with, with the cloud environment, but also onto your um, infrastructure behind your firewall. It can connect to any databases. Um, so that is what Dell Boomi does. So, so with that being, as far as the data integration, I want to touch on the different types of integrations that you have. So you may have a real-time integration, which is um, talking to the uh, systems directly. And then the next is the batch integration, uh, which I'm going to touch a little bit on. And then, of course, security. Again, when you push data, if it is in the cloud, when you how can you securely get the data back into your data warehouse? So that is an important thing that has to be considered as far as the data integrators are concerned. Then um, can I do a bulk load? Can I do bulk um, data transfers or bulk data pull? All those things has to be considered. And again, these providers have to be innovative to support any type of cloud infrastructure that comes in place because today I may be working on cloud A, tomorrow I may go to cloud B or, or whatever be the case. As the technology grows, they should be able to grow along with that. So that is how data integration topic has to be looked at it. So again, since I'm touching on Salesforce, I'm going to look at some of the real-time integrations they provide. Th this may not be specific. This is specific to Salesforce, but if you look at the other providers, they will also have similar kind of things. So in the real-time data integrations, they usually go with the APIs. Um, with the APIs, so you have the standard um, SOAP and the REST APIs, which you can pick and choose depending on what your business needs are. But um, in this case, Salesforce provides both. They can, they can expose both SOAP and REST APIs, and then they, they will be able to consume that also on their side. And then the bulk is one of the things is a key feature. The, the reason being, I am, I'm going to push a, a large amount of data into the cloud, or I want to pull a large amount of data outside of the cloud. So that is where the bulk API happens. So most of the time, the bulk API is all asynchronous. It is not a synchronous one. But they use the basic concept of SOAP and REST to provide that bulk API concept. And then you got the streaming API. So the streaming API is something that when you think about, um, if, you, if you go to a call center, you may have seen that, okay, here is the number of calls that, uh, that came in. Here is the number of uh, resources available to work on the calls. Here is the number of um, calls that we have taken. So there is a ticker that goes, or even in stock market, you will see the, uh, the ticker that goes up and down. So the streaming API is, is the same concept where uh, the data will be pulled continuously and the results will be reflected on it. So they, they have provided a concept where you can actually use the streaming API for your typical applications like the call center or uh, stock market or any of those sticker applications that you want to use that can be used uh, as a streaming API. So that helps so you don't have to poll. So they have a constant polling mechanism to do that. So with that being said, that is the real-time integration. So I want to touch a little bit on the batch data integration. So if you think about batches, so not all the things can happen on a real time. Because if I want to get the data to my data warehouse or to a data um, to outside of the cloud environment, we typically go with a batch because the amount of data that may be coming out may be huge, especially if in this world where um, every device is used as a, as a source, the, the IoT, all those devices you have, so much amount of data is being um, stored in the cloud. So if you want to analyze your data, if you want to get the data out of 
So you need these data integrators which use the batch processes. So you can actually pull the data and then you can have the data settle, uh, come into your data warehouse where you can analyze. Or sometimes you may have your data that is in your data warehouse, but you may need to send it for an ana analysis purpose on say Google Analytics. So that is where these cloud providers can help you or the data integrators can help you to push and pull data. And some of the things to consider is, do they have uh, event and activity monitoring? Um, do they have a good GUI to, to drag and drop? Because uh, with the technology that we have, especially if you are going with a data integrator, it would be nice to have an easy interface so it's easily customizable. And then do they have suggest if you have 50, 100, 200 columns, I don't want to drag and drop one at a time. Can I do, can it recommend me if the names matches, can it, can it do that? And then um, I know we focus on cloud, but most of them are not just on the cloud. Do they support my backend infrastructure on-prem solution? Do, do I have a control over that? So that those are all the criteria and the things that we have to look into it when we make a decision on integrating solutions or integrating data or integrating applications between either cloud and uh, cloud and on-prem or within the cloud to cloud. So any of those things, the decisions has to be done based on some of the key features. Again, it depends on what you would want to do and what your future is looking like as far as the company business is concerned. That is how you make a decision on it. So, um, in summary, the data has to flow back and forth. It is not a one-way street. It is not always sitting in the cloud because if it goes into the cloud, it needs to come back for analysis or uh, you have to take your data and then put it on the cloud for your analysis. So with that being said, um, the cloud is good, but there is a huge cost associated when, whenever you start pulling data. So that is where you have to consider what is the right source? What is the right place to do your data warehousing um, for your analytics? You have to look into that before you make a decisions or before you recommend a decisions for anybody whom uh, you are recommending. So again, um, this is post innovation, uh, innovation post COVID. So one of the reasons I want to touch base on Salesforce is uh, this is a real time um, things that happen um, again with the COVID with the COVID nineteen that happened with my company that I'm working with, we had to develop products for them in a small period of time to tr keep track of all my all the employees because of the COVID. They wanted to keep track of um, whoever got infected, whoever ha has to go on a leave, whoever uh, had to be quarantined. So we had to build a system fast enough so we can support the business needs. Um, believe it or not, we did in, in a week. On Saturday, we started and then next Saturday, we launched a system for logging all the calls that come into our, um, our data, not, not data center, our service desk or the help desk for the leave team to be able to be up and running and to collect information about our employees. And again, we, we had to do another system for planning purposes. So, so the managers in the area, um, HR managers can be able to keep track of their employees depending on the needs, if people go on vacation or they have been quarantined. So we had to come up with system for that. And again, because of that, a lot of people went on on this quarantine. They had to come back again. So for that, we have developed. So almost we developed three systems in the last, probably within less than four or five weeks to support the business needs of, we have um, around 40,000 so employees. So to keep track of all of them uh, in the sense that if they are having uh, any symptoms or anything related to COVID, so thereby we can support the employees and also support the organization. Um, so that is that, that is the power of the cloud. Yes, we did take advantage of the things that were provided to us and we were able to provide systems uh, to support these kind of um, catastrophes that has happened. 
So with that, um, these are all my references that I use, so just as an FYI. So those are all the things that I had. I think I might have went a little fast. So um, if you have any questions, thoughts, I will leave the floor open. Hello, Dharma sir. Yes, ma'am. Can we go for question and position? Yep. Participants, now the forum is left for your queries. So either you can pose the, your queries in the QA box or you can raise your hand to speak. Dharma sir, there's one question in QA box. Dharma sir? Okay. Yep, yeah, yeah, let me check. The difference That's between right. Salesforce and Force.com. There was one query in uh, QA box. Okay, okay. Yeah. So, so the basic difference between uh, Salesforce, see Salesforce is a product, okay? Force.com is a language that, that is in, uh, that Salesforce uses. So it is like, um, it's like Java, it's it's a contained version of Java. So force.com is um, is the language that, that you have to write code um, in Salesforce. So that, that is um, that is what sales uh, the force.com is. Um, again, another question that came in is the cost of service. So again, cost of service depends on what type of model that you're going to pick. So they have the different models that they provide, like any other. So even um, you have what Zoho. So for Zoho, they may say the one that we are using today may say if you have ten participants, I will give you for X dollars. But if you have fifty participants, I will give you for Y dollars because the cost is going to go down. So it's the same fashion. And then the number of services that they offer. So what kind of service you want based on that. Um, the cost of it, because this is a continuous process, right? Uh, they are providing you service, they are supporting the infrastructure, they are giving you everything and their uptime is so high that the, they will negotiate the cost based on how many users that are going to use the service. So that is how it normally happens. Um, and again, number of users makes a big difference. If you have 5,000 users, you may get a much cheaper price than if you have 50 users. So I don't know if that answers uh, your question. Okay, the next question I have is, um, does cloud provide provides enough parameters for security issues? Yes, so one of the things I would, um, I have done a lot of evaluation in the sense my team and um, have done a lot of evaluations. So before, before you, choose a product or before you go in, you can ask them to provide all the information that you need as far as the security. Especially security is the, the biggest one as far as the cloud infrastructure is concerned. So you can ask them, okay, can you provide me uh, all the details about what happened in your, um, in your organization as far as the secu security is concerned in the last X years? You could provide, if they don't provide, then it is the wrong platform that you are choosing. So every provider, um, security pro every cloud providers and partners will provide you that information as long as you ask them the right question. Okay. So I uh, hope that answers your question. Okay. Any other questions? So actually, yeah, yeah, come with your query, buddy. Uh, actually, there are some more questions in the top, sir. How can we use this cloud services for agriculture? Is one question. Okay. 
and then user authentication related questions are also there okay okay so the question is so you can use the product the way you want that is why i said there are so many clouds available what whatever kind of business you you have so in this case if you say an agriculture that is fine but you have a use case right so when you look at agriculture you may say okay how many farms are there or what kind of fertilizer i want to use what kind of product i want or what kind of uh, um, crop that i want to do so you you have a set list of things that you want to look at it so for that cloud is just a place where you want to store and how you want to utilize it but it can be customized to the way you want and then different providers provide that and some of them may be customized to the specific area so when i said sales cloud so that is a normal thing that happens so they know okay you are going to have a list of customers you will make a call you will have a contact so they will provide but if you don't have anything available you can actually build it yourself on the cloud environment too okay so one of the question i saw here is so that is regarding security uh sorry uh, and then how can we use cloud computing for agriculture okay uh, about authentication okay so all the cloud providers provide the authentication with the, which is basically using their own username and password but if you have uh, behind the firewall systems in your own network what i would recommend is always you will have a like a saml or a sso or any of those things in your firewall so they do support most of the providers will support any of the firewalls uh, any of the authentications that you have built within your systems so thereby you don't have to keep two different usernames passwords all those things so most of them should have it but if they don't then that is a criteria that you have to think about can i trust them so some of the things they do provide is you can actually restrict something called ip restrictions you can say that okay everybody has to be on my vpn on my network before even they get into the cloud you can do that because for the the things that i have is we don't allow anybody to get into the systems they have to be vpn in they have to come into our network before they can access the cloud so you you can put security to any level that you want so thereby somebody is not going to a coffee shop and then logging into their salesforce.com and then don't log off and come out so you cannot do that it's again it's up to your company or your resource to make sure that those are all in place before you go live okay did, did that answer your question okay so silence i'm taking yes uh hello yes so on final question how many types of portal are available in now uh, salesforce there's one query okay. from okay so salesforce has so many avenues I, i mean like i said they have back in 2009 or 10 when we were evaluating and when we were looking they had the primitive model in the sense at that time it was very good but if you look from now uh it was a basic model that was available and they are continually changing so they they still they don't develop products just for one or two use cases so they look at holistically how people are using and then they provide the clouds based on those use cases so one of the things that i can again tell you is so with this post covid um they wanted to have a product to say call salesforce care so they can they provided a basic structure where you can actually um collect the covid related at least the basic information on covid related immediately so they, they try to come up with ideas and innovate innovative ways to support the businesses based on based on what is available or what is hot in the market what is needed for the business so the Uh, if you go to salesforce you can see a number of products like i said there is the sales service marketing iot and then they have i think in the last 3 or 4 years they have done einstein uh, which is their ai portion of it so 
as the technology grows, they come up with different ways of um, providing the services to the customer. Sir, actually, I have a question. Yes, Some answer. Yeah, please go ahead. Sir, in India, if you take any data, the people, a billion people uh, contained in India have a lot of data. So if we implement in this scenario into cloud computing, is it possible does we have India have the essential infrastructure facility to hold such data? Yes. So here is, here is a simple way of looking at it. So if you are thinking about billion, um, say, every individual in India gets a, a data set, for example. So you are looking at 1.3 billion or what, whatever be the case. So the technology has grown so much, you won't believe the amount of data that gets stored. So let me put this into perspective for you. Um, okay, I could use football. I'm not going to use football since it's in India. So I'm going to use cricket. Okay, so there are systems which capture everything that happens in the cricket, the, the number of uh, the runs that scored, the number of things that happen. So um, e everything that is happening is recording, is getting recorded into, um, into one of the systems. So in this case, in, in American, there is the football. So everything that happens, so during the season, they say they store uh, terabytes and terabytes of data for every year that that season goes on. So think about it. The amount of data that goes into this is huge. It is nothing compared to the 1.3 billion records that you are looking at it. Yes, the, the technology has grown in such a way that the number, the amount of data that gets collected, especially with, with any of the technology, if you have whatever WhatsApp or um, any of every messages is stored. Think about how many messages are getting sent and how many are getting stored. So I, I don't think uh, at this point uh, uh, in 2020, there is no uh, issue with the data. The computing power is so large with the AI and different technologies that is available. They can crunch like anything. So that, that, is, not a, that is not a limitation at this point of time. Okay, thank you. Any more questions? Oh, uh, uh, yes, sir. Uh, yes, ma'am. Participants, any more questions? Okay, there is one that says, how does centralized user authentication work? So like I, um, I briefly touched on it before, the, the user authentication can happen directly from Salesforce or any of the cloud, cloud providers. So if you go to Google, they will use your Gmail or if you use your, um, um, any of say Google is one example, or if you have your own company doing it, they will have some kind of authentication. So you can either interface your authentication with theirs if they support like a SAML or uh, SSO, any of those things is available already, or they, you can completely rely upon whatever that cloud provider provides. They have uh, um, the greatest level of security authenticated um, authentication available to each of the systems that they put in place. Any more questions? Okay, there is one more which says, what about the security of putting data in the cloud? Again, okay, that goes to um, what do you want to choose? Say, for example, if you feel like, okay, I have more sensitive data that I don't want to send it in the cloud. So then what you have to do is you have to make a decision to say, I'm not going to use the public cloud. There is this private cloud. Um, which will say that, okay, you have control over it. When I say you have control, you have control over the infrastructure, you have control over the data that is going in. So that becomes a private cloud within your network. So they do support that one. Um, 
generally speaking, even in the public cloud, they have encryption. They have, uh, that doesn't mean that it cannot be hacked. What I'm saying is they are continuously working on making it secure. Um, that, that is why I said the first thing is trust. So it is like when you live in an apartment building, um, in a, in, in, a, in a high story apartment building, you have some kind of trust before you go into the house saying that, okay, I'm going to trust the builder because that is what I'm in that place. So it is the same kind when you think about putting your data. In this case, you are putting yourself in the apartment building. So here, again, it's the same thing. Um, if you trust them, then you, you can go into your um, apartment building. If you don't trust them, then you have to have a a single family home, fully fenced, and you can have it um, within your boundaries. So they have that provision also. Again, it's the cost, it's the sensitivity of the data, all those things is a factor. Thank you, sir. Yep. So one more, it says the dif difference between privacy and confidentiality. So privacy, um, privacy is a very good one. I know um with the gdpr i don't know how many have heard about it or know about it so um the gdpr is the one that they are putting a lot of stress on the uh, privacy and confidentiality agreement so that has now um spiraled into a different way, ways of looking at it so you can actually request um to say okay remove me from any of those uh ad campaigns or phone calls or any of, you can request for that. As a consumer, you can do that. So there are different provisions available, but some of them may not be able to because if you have done business with them, they may have business limitations which says, okay, I cannot let you do that. So there are more stress and more policies and procedures in, put in place as far as the privacy and confidentiality is concerned. Uh, like I said, they, they do they do support saying, okay, I'm going to um, hold your data within your tenant or I'm not going to expose it to anybody else. So that is, again, goes with the trust. And then privacy, again, you, you can control some of the privacy within your user group also. So they do have provision. There is uh, encryption available. So th there are various kinds of technologies and tools available. So the more you go in depth, then there is a cost, there is um, uh, development efforts, there is a number of other things that needs to be considered before uh, you step into the cloud. Again, the, the cloud is a quick and easy way to deliver something that you want immediately, but if you have a grand vision, then you have to look at the full picture before entering into that space. Okay, okay hope that answered. Um, what you're looking for? Any any other questions or thoughts? Any queries from uh, participants? Okay. If there is no other questions, again, thank you for the opportunity that was given, and uh, hope you and your families are doing good and at least staying safe with this COVID and everything related to COVID. Um, yeah, it was yeah, useful. Yeah. To... That me, sir? Yeah, yes. It was a wonderful interactive session shared by you, sir. Hope all the participants could have enjoyed this information session and got that truthful information regarding the integration of systems on the cloud. Okay. I hope so. Thank you so much okay. for uh, spending a valuable time with us on this day. Thank you, Doctor. Yep. Thank you very much. And thank you all for attending. Hope this was useful to uh, each of you. At least you gained something from this. So thank you very much. Thank you, thank sir. You, sir. Thank you, sir. Bye. Participants, thank you so much for your uh, involvement. And meet you all tomorrow in the same forum at the Pulse at the for the eighty session. The title DevOps and resource person is Mr. Sivasindal Kumar, Senior Manager, DevOps from Desault Systems, Boston, USA. So meet you all tomorrow by 5 30 p.m. Thank you.